In this lesson, we're going to start talking about osmoregulation and this point here, but we really do need to do a recap of the urinary system and kidney function before we do that. So remember that mammals excrete their nitrogenous waste as urea. If more protein is eaten than the body actually needs, any excess protein or amino acids can't be stored in the body. Now, excess amino acids are broken down in the liver by deamination, and the nitrogenous waste product of deamination is ammonia. Now, this ammonia is highly toxic, so immediately the ammonia has to be converted into something less toxic, and we convert it into urea. Now, oops, sorry, urea is the main nitrogenous product, waste product in humans. It's carried from the liver to the kidneys in the bloodstream where it's filtered out and excreted as urine. Now, the urinary system consists of the kidneys, the ureter, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. And the kidneys are the main excretory organs for the elimination of nitrogenous waste. So the kidneys play a really important role in filtering the blood, and they filter about 50 litres of blood every hour. So removing the waste products of chemical reactions, urea, excess amounts of salt and water in the blood, all that kind of stuff. Now, each kidney receives its own blood supply from the branch of the aorta called the renal artery, which is this red one here, and the renal vein, this blue one, uh, carries the filtered blood back out. So the filtered waste product is excreted from the kidney as urine, obviously coming through here through the ureter, and it drains to the bladder and then drains out via the urethra. So the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. There are millions of these things inside each kidney. And at one end of the nephron, in the cortex, is the cup-shaped Bowman's capsule there. And immediately below the Bowman's capsule is the twisted region called the proximal convoluted tubule. And you'll remember that the blood pushes, um, the blood gets to quite high pressures and pushes the uh, liquid part of the blood into the glomerulus, sorry, from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And then it will travel all the way through the, the nephron. And it leads to, you know, all these sections lead all the way down to the loop and family and back up. And when waste products are, you know, kept in the tube, they'll come out as urine. But those bits that the body actually needs to reabsorb will come out and immediately be diffused straight into the bloodstream. Now, the bloodstream interacts with that nephron really closely. Um, you know, right at the beginning there, I said that the glomerulus, the big clump of looping capillaries, is going to really high pressure blood forcing the small molecules in the water into the Bowman's capsule. And that, you know, fluid is called filtrate by that stage. And that filtrate is moving through that tube all the way. Now, water is really reabsorbed by the body. So it's taken back into the bloodstream. And salts enter and exit the nephron in the tube as it moves all the way through to create that urine. About 99% of what passes through the nephron is reabsorbed, right? Whether it's active or passive, it comes back into the body and is not removed as waste. So it's transported back into the bloodstream so the body can use it. And what ends up coming out of the collecting duct is now known as urine. It's going to travel through the ureter into the urinary bladder and excrete via the urethra where appropriate. So remember, we have to understand these things before we move on to start talking about osmoregulation in animals.